that said and done, hoping, to, hoping that my lecture teaches you to um, um, a, a appreciate people with disabilities, because we all have some, right? So what do you need to put in this project? A cover page, an opening page. So generally the opening page is, don't call it opening page, but it's a page in which you say, okay, this is what the class is about. A table of content, and then you have something called divider pages. I'll show you the divider pages in a minute. They're the pages in between, you'll have like different sections, right? Projects, exercises, design discussions, at the beginning of each of those sections, you have a page that summarizes what were those design discussions or what were those projects. Kind of an opening page that introduces what that section is about. And then you want to have, obviously, three projects, at least one or more pages each. So maybe in, pro in each project you have two pages. One for the process in which you show the initial sketches and you had the fact that you had three comps and then you came up with one in the second page in which you show a finish, the finished sketch and the finished uh, work, right? The finished results. And then you want to have an op uh, about me page, like a short bio, and then you want to have discussion pages, you know, lecture. Those are our optional because I'm asking for five of them, that is a lot, you know, five discussion pages. But remember, your piece has to be at least 20 pages. My point is, you might decide instead of putting the discussion pages, that you make the project pages beefier. So, if, or each project, instead of putting one or two pages, you might put four. In that case, you will fill in the 20 pages with the, mostly the project and the exercises, and you don't have to worry about the discussion. Or you might say, you know what, I feel like this piece will be more complete and describe the class better if the discussion were, were, were there, so I'm going to use less you know, pages for the project. It's totally your discretion. Ultimately, you make your own destiny in terms of what do you want as the, as the final piece. Um, so now that you know what it needs to be in there, now you need to make sure you have only two type of fonts in there, and that means also font sizes. So don't go in one page and have font 36 in the second page, font you know 18, and the third page the same exact font but 12. You know, don't have a million font sizes. Try to stick with two fonts maximum, maybe one for the title, one for the body of text, and try to keep consistent the sizing of the font because it just keeps everything tidier. And I'll show you an, a, a few examples of student work, but even the example of the uh, demo I did yesterday in which everything looks very professional. I use minimum amount of color, minimum amount of, of uh, you know, fonts and stuff. So let's look at some of the project. Um, I don't remember which one yesterday I thought was really a good idea. And we're gonna look at it on Canvas. We're not gonna download them and have all the interactivity. So this is one of the projects. So this is the main page, what you would call the home page, or in this in this the cover page for us up here. So you have a cover page that says process book and your name, and then you have a in in between page that tells you this is a process book of what? of Art 182, the name is Foundation on Digital Art, and this is what it does. Then, and notice, if I click on here, I can move through all the various pages, or I can go back to the beginning. Then you have Table of Content. Table of Content shows you three sections. Likely, I forget, I wish that the student had put it down here. You notice when I mouse over here, it means they're clickable. It means I can go to the various section. Likely our project exercises discussions, but I don't remember, or maybe is. Um, project and exercises and then about me. Again, I, this, this example teaches you maybe you want to label it so that we know where we're going, right? And then I assume this is actually exercises and you jump in exercises where it shows you all the exercises. Now, this student put exercises for each you know, a week. Now you can decide to just put it for the one that to you were the most meaningful. I'm fine. As I said, you just have to fill 20 pages. You decide how to use those 20 pages wisely, right? And notice how there is a cohesive design, right? There's a very slick, you know, very modern look. There are two colors so far, actually one, really yellow, because black and white are not colors. And here there is something that kind of always indicates in which page you are, how to go back to the beginning, and how to go to the next and the prior page. Every thing always in the same place. There's no way you can get lost. That is cool. Now what is missing in these pages? Look at this, what is missing on this page? Let's say I'm sent to this um, a PDF because I'm hiring some, someone for an internship. I am looking through this, prod, this uh, portfolio. I've been looking through 50 of them. I'm kind of tired, so I'm gonna go make myself a tea. I make myself a tea, come back, and I say, you know, but this student is really great. What's the name of the student again? 
oops, right? Means it might be helpful somewhere, like in these two black lines that are going to direction, what I would have put here very kind of subtle is the name of the student and the contact info. They look like ideal places for that. Does it make sense? You kind of want to put it in every page because you never know. As I said, that person is looking at all these portfolio. There might be a certain point that they look at on one project and say, oh my gosh, this is so clever. Such a good design. I got to, you know, this is, would be a great candidate. Let me write the name down. Oops, where is the name? Do I have to go way all the way back to the first page? I guess so. But you want to make it easy on people. Yeah, when I started working in web design 20 something years ago, and tells you how old I am, I remember there was this rule of the no more than three clicks. So even in super complicated a website like LucasArts, you know, video games website that we were working on in this company, we could not you know, anything you had to reach within three clicks, you know, means even, no matter how deep you went into the navigation, because obviously there is primary navigation, secondary, tertiary, but at a certain point, if you went past three clicks, the boss was going to be really pissed with you. So you better behave, right, type of thing. Anyway, so, but that was kind of a rule, not just with my boss, in, in the world of web design, when the when web design started, actually. So obviously we have the lecture, so you can see that there is a list of projects right here. These are kind of the, also, these could be the divider pages. They could be actually at the beginning of the project, but instead the student decided to put them one after the other and allow the person to go and navigate by clicking on these buttons, it's great. So here we are, then the exercise starts and it tells you what each exercise, what the exercise that you see is about, that is really nice. And now the, the visual identity has turned around beautifully, intelligent, but still the navigation stays the same, right? You have the arrows, you have the going back to the beginning and the page numbering. Then you have exercise two and three, and you get the picture of how this goes. Very, in a way, there is a sense of repetition that actually helps the person who is viewing this focus on the art and just read what it needs to be read. What I would have done, that is this font a little smaller. Do you see how if I look at this page and I ask you, which one is the primary you know, thing that you see? Do you first see the left or do you see the content here? Probably the left, why? Because it's really solid, really big, it's screaming at you, right? So what I would have done here is in the interior pages is maybe made this yellow, like a pale yellow, made the exercise 10 a little bit smaller, shrink this to be much smaller so that these could be much bigger. My point is, also when you look at your page, ask yourself, does my work really shine? I mean, in this case, it's just an exercise, so it doesn't matter. But let's see, when we went to the project, did I already go through the project? I forget, all right, no, we started from exercises. So let's go to the project. Okay, project one. So you see that this was actually a completely different project at the time. It was called an object four ways. So you found a natural object and you had to draw it in different styles. So these are the study sketches. And this is the final result. I do like that in the project, things w w were moved to the other side. So there is a little bit of variety, but there's still very much high consistency in the design. And I have to admit, I. I can't see the project pretty well. The project is, is pretty nice. And then project two was, I think, the mascot that you guys did, but without the blending component. And that student decided to put on a backpack instead of a t-shirt. Now, when we talk about this, this um, piece, I want to tell you a lot of my students in the other class are struggling because what they did is they basically took this part that is vector and rasterized it to put it next to this, this part, right? I, I always tell people, try your best not to rasterize it because vector is so much better vector because it stays nice and crisp. So if you need to, if you want to bring these two into the project, make them into two separate uh, boxes, graphic boxes. In one, you bring in the AI file. And remember, in design, accept the AI and the PSD, no problem. And in this one, you put in the JPEG or whatever you downloaded. So you have two separate boxes. One is vector, one is uh, one contains vector, one contains a bitmap. Now, I told you that in design, accept a vector, and P that means AI and PSDs, no problem. But if your PSD is huge, let's say you did a beautiful poster for Project 3 that has a ton of, you know, um, uh, let's say masks and um, adjustment layers, and you go and look at the file size of that PSD and is 50 megabytes or even five megabytes, then you should definitely do that uh, optimization I taught you and make it into a JPEG or a PNG. Why? Because this is gonna become a PDF that you wanna email to people. And the bigger the files you popped in here, the bigger the PDF. 
So the vector I, I never worry too much about because generally vector is pretty small because behind vector there are, what is vector? Equations, Equations mathematical formulas, just, you know, tiny little beautiful text that can change when you scale thing based on, you know, radius it was two, now I scale it double becomes four. Behind, behind the scene is ma mainly math, right? But when we talk about bin map, it's a different story. So whenever you have Photoshop, ask yourself if you're popping into InDesign, should I maybe get, make sure that I, I get it smaller? Now smaller means JPEG, PNG, or GIF. But also smaller means whatever you bring into InDesign that is bitmap, even if you decide to bring a PSD, you still want to go open it up, do a save as, and then change it to be 72 PPI in resolution because you don't need it bigger. I mean, some people make it 144 if it at 72 feels really is falling apart. And then you want to definitely make it no more than a thousand pixel in width or 700 and something in height. Because you remember the resolution of the screen is 1024 by 768. So I always keep it 760 by, sorry, 760 in height by 960 in width. Just to make sure, because if you make it any bigger, then you still have to scale it down inside of InDesign, but InDesign has to remember the big fat file size. Does it make sense? So project two, and then this is project three, um, that is surreal, is a surreal collage. And then we have project four, that is what, you know, oh, project four, did they do for project that quarter? We used to have, you know, one extra project in this class, but I confess. And this is, I, we, we change it, we put one less because it fell already like crazy. Doesn't it feel already crazy with the project we have? Can you imagine squeezing in one more? Anyway, we were giving a lot less in design and we were doing mostly a lot of technical and I feel like the design is as important of the technical, especially at the ba basic level. Sorry, I want to make sure that is silence. Um, so this is more the, the lectures, right? You know, what are in design and Photoshop and then graphic design uh, theory and element using color. This is the equivalent of the discussions for you guys. Uh, and then there is the end. That's the, so this is a good example. I can show you many others, but what I want to, the reason I wanted to show you one example is to show you that ultimately what are we doing in this class? We're doing something similar. Sorry, this is my dissertation. I'm going to close it, sure, <coughs> save it. And I'm going to open what I did yesterday and show you what ultimately we're going to do. Sorry, but in between I have opened a lot of things, I've done a lot of things, okay. So this is what I created in class yesterday from scratch and that's what we're gonna do. Same story, we're gonna have an opening page. Now in my case, I don't have obviously images of my own projects or exercises and stuff. So because I do love robots, I collect robots, I decided to instead <laughs> collect images online of robots and use those as a placeholder. But what I did here is I wanted to have three sections in my in my document and I said, okay, I'm gonna find three spectacular images. In your case, they might be images of your final um, you know, project or they might be just like in the example with Saw, some really interesting graphic images that are quite abstract that lead you to the various sections of, of this piece. So that's page one and then if you go in page two, you have the table of content. Now, I did not put my fault. In fact, I should do it. I forgot to put the, the page about 182. What was I 182 about? So in here, and for the sake of now, forgive me, but what you would want to do here is um, right here say, uh, one, 182, what's the name of this class? Digital R Foundation. And um, now I don't want, uh, and maybe I'll make, make it a little bit bigger. And then below has a piece of text that's explain what digital art foundation is, right? So right here, it would have kind of text or images from the class, but a, a brief description of the class would not hurt. So like something like, sorry for the font there, I did not really format it, but something that looks like this and maybe has a few images of the class right below right here explain what the class is and here there are some example or not but you do have to have this now notice that my navigation has arrow that takes you back and forth and it has these kind of play these basically section that you can go to so what i created was cover page kind of like intermediate page that talks about the class table of content page in which i see the projects 
the design lecture, the exercises, and the about me. And then if I click on this, it takes me to the project. That is what I start from. And this is the divider page for me for the project. It's a, a page that is a, the beginning of my project in which it says, this is what project one was about, this is what project two was about, and this is what project three was about. Notice that every page has my name in there, my contact info, the navigation that takes me to all the different, the beginning of every section, and obviously a linear way to see everything with the arrows. So I can see this project linearly by clicking click, click, click on this arrow so I keep moving forward or backward, or I can jump around through this section through this navigation. Does it make sense? And then obviously I have project one in which I have a, you know, and actually in project one, you don't need the de description if you have that, right? So what I could have is actually three images of project one, like this, boom. And I'm gonna center them a little better. I mean, let me do this, let me move. Actually, I'm gonna leave it for now. So then in project one, you start having images of project one, and then project two, same story, and project three. Then I go into design lecture. And here first, this is the kind of, in quote, divider page, in which I just simply specify what is in the design lecture. And imagine here you have week one, two, three, and four, six, seven, eight, nine, and I specify each design lecture what is about, like I put some placeholder for now, I forget what each week we covered. And then you go in and see, for example, the one that to you were more important, like the use of scale, and you have you know a little blurb about you know what does that design principle is about, and then a couple of images that demonstrate it, use of patterns, use of alignment. Then you jump into the exercises, and the exercises are week one, two, and three. Same story of what I did with the discussion. I move it to the side, and here I populate it with more you know, columns, uh, and you don't need to though, put exercises from each week. Maybe what you like is you list everything you, uh, which week you like, you know, here you list everything, but then you go and say, hey, here is, is exercises week one, here week four, and here week eight, because those weeks to me were really, really cool exercises. You don't have to put them all, it's up to you. Again, you have to fulfill 20 pages, you decide how. And in fact, the, the design discussion here, Design lecture, you could, as I said, they're optional. You could skip it. Yes? Um, do you, I, I missed this part. Do you want it horizontal or vertical? Guess what? We're looking at it on a screen. You're, you're super smart. Thank you. Um, so always, actually, that's a, a brilliant question, though. Whenever you're producing anything, guys, think about that stuff. I mean, who is going to see it? Who's my audience? So beside... How am I going to look at it? Am I, is this going to be seen on a screen or am I going to print it? Is it going to be in a book? How is it going to go? But also, you know, who's my audience? Who's going to see this? And if you're applying to, for example, graphic design, you know, <coughs> internships, then you might want this to have also some kind of slick, slick design feature like the one we just saw from that student. If you're applying for a photography internship, who cares about having slick design, right? You just want to have your photos featured the best possible way. So your question is actually really smart because it tells us it's not just about, okay, let's crank this work and get it done, but why don't we think about who I am and how do I represent myself well for the audience I'm sending it to, right? Because likely you will apply for internship and you could use this as a start. And then these are the exercises and then obviously guess what? You have an about me page Again, all of it has always my name and the navigation. So that's kind of what we're going to build from scratch, guys. Is that, and obviously here, instead of having the images of the robots, we will we'll have your images or something you, you come up with. So uh, does anybody have any question of what is the ultimate goal of this? I'm going to stop the recording and use the